What's up my little locals? Welcome back to Becoming the Local. I ended up exploring a few new places that I really wanted to share with you guys and just kind of give you some tips should you ever go to these places yourself. So on Saturday, my boyfriend and I, we went with some church friends to this local air museum about one town over in Chino Hills. Before we went into the museum, we ate at this restaurant right next to the museum called Flo's Airport Cafe. And guys, it was so good. And not only was the food amazing, but some of the waitresses and waiters apparently have been there like since the beginning and they were just spouting off what we should get from the menu and just kind of telling us, you know, the best ways to eat the food that we ordered. One thing that I loved about this cafe is on the inside, all around the walls are these old vintage and historic pictures and articles of different events that have happened throughout history and you know specifically about wars and military and aircraft and um, a lot of them had to do with people from you know southern california so definitely recommend the food is so good and the prices are, are very manageable and just the atmosphere of it is just so cool this restaurant splits two different museums there are two different air museums one is yanks museum air museum I hear it's a little bit more expensive, but you know, it's still good. But I hear the one that we went to is a little bit better and a little bit cheaper. So we went to the Fame of Plains Air Museum and you know, the entry fee is $20, which might sound like a lot, but I feel like we got our money's worth for sure. This place just kept going and going. It was like, um, metal building after metal building after metal building full of just the most beautiful, cool, unique, vintage, historic aircraft. We, I, I was only expecting to be there for like an hour, maybe an hour and a half. I think we were there for like two, maybe two and a half hours, probably two hours. And uh, it was just like stepping back in time and experiencing, you know, little pieces of history, whether it's Pearl Harbor, um, Korean War, World War II, World War I. I mean, there were so many amazing artifacts from these different historical times um, throughout the world that were just so, so beautifully displayed. And what I loved about this museum is that the staff members were so involved. They just had so much knowledge about each of these artifacts, each of these aircraft, and they would tell you the backstory of each one. besides the two in the back uh, back position, those ones are connected. So the radio men can actually go around inside of the compartment in the rear and also operate the rear tail gun on the very bottom of the piece. I think what really moved me the most is that most of, of these historical events are from less than 100 years ago. I mean, really not that long ago. And obviously there's, you know, tension in the world and wars going on and we're not really far off from major events to that capacity happening. And so it was just very humbling to walk around and just kind of see what life during wartime was like. So really enjoyed it. Give it a two thumbs up, five star rating. So then on Sunday after worship, Philip and I went with some friends to explore this tide pool area that I had heard about from other friends. I've seen it on Instagram, but I've just never gone. It's located in Laguna Beach and it's called Thousand Steps Beach. 
So if you go to this, there's a couple of things to consider before you go. Number one, is if you go during a time of high tides, it, this area that we went to is not accessible and the lifeguards will like kick you out. In fact, when we got there, even though we were going during the low tide time of the day, when we got there, a lifeguard was, was you know, announcing to everyone, there's only 45 minutes until the tide rises. So you guys need to hurry and get out of here or you're gonna get stuck. So yeah, definitely look up the tide. The other thing to consider is safety. So if you um, have difficulty with stairs or with climbing rocks or wading through part of ocean water, this adventure is probably not for you, unfortunately. But for those who don't mind a little bit of risk, maybe a little bit of danger, this is like right up your alley. So we parked, we went on a weekend, and because of that, there's this little hospital and clinic right across the street to the entrance of Thousand Steps Beach called Mission Hospital. On the weekends, it's closed, and so you can park for free in their little um, public parking area. So if you go on a weekend, I would suggest parking there. Otherwise, you can park up and down the coastal highway or one of the neighboring neighborhoods. To get there, you walk down these steps. Now, I was expecting there to literally be a thousand steps because that's what it's called, Thousand Steps Beach. But I think there's probably somewhere between like 150 to 200 steps. I did not count them, but I will say it definitely felt like going up and down a thousand steps. So I see why they call it that because Y'all, today my calves are on fire. They're killing me. I feel like I have this like stone ball in my calf. So you walk down these stairs and then it, of course it opens up into the beautiful Laguna Blue Beach, just breathtaking. Once you get off the stairs, you're going to turn to the left and you're just going to keep walking down the beach. Not very far, just literally a few minutes around the corner. And you'll eventually get to the spot where there's just rocks and right past the rocks is this little, I don't necessarily want to say cave, but it's kind of like an alcove area. And that is actually what you need to go into to get eventually to the tide pools where we were. Definitely recommend wearing shoes. Don't do this barefoot. the rocks and then you get to the little alcove and a little cave really fun to explore there's lots of crabs we saw a lot of crabs like in the crevices which was really cute also kind of creepy crabs freak me out Ooh, see how far back it goes spooky Then it ends. Hey, little oh, guy. There's like crabs. Oh, there's, yeah. There's one there. Oh, there's like multiple crabs right there. Looking a little crabby, I must say. They'll make great crabby patties. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you see like the start to these little tide pools all around. Really all that we saw other than crabs were um, like, I don't, I don't know what they're, the sea anemones. I'm probably saying that wrong and you guys are gonna make fun of me, but I'm pretty sure that's what they're called. They're like the little slugs with the little fringy things. And if you like touch them, they close up. 
And so if you guys know me, you know, I have OCD, I have a lot of like aversions to textures and food. And so there are just some things that I cannot even look at or think about touching or have a visceral response. And a few of those things are like the sea crustaceans that are on rocks. I, I cannot even look at them because I get this irrational fear of falling on top of them and what they feel like. So I get like, even, even like thinking about it right now, I'm sweating and feel nauseous and dizzy. <laughs> okay. The other thing is these little sea creatures, just thinking about touching them and then moving and like closing. It just freaked me out, but I wanted to do it. And I wanted to be adventurous, so I did. I like stuck my finger on it and sure enough, it like closes up. It's kind of amazing when you think about it. Oh man, it looks like a loogie. Right? Oh, this is Go really for it, go for it. You got it. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh it moves. Squish that Woo! thing. Woo! Ew. He's reacting. Put your so... finger right in the middle. Absolutely not. No? Just... Oh, come on. <laughs> That's as far as I'm gonna get. Sorry, little guy. They're everywhere. Oh my gosh. <laughs> ah, no, it's huge. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's like a Velcro feel. The small one. Okay. That feels a little like if you were. Oh, I can't do it. No. But yeah, just really fun to explore. Um, I'm sure we could have seen more things had we spent more time in that area. But, you know, if you have time to kill, definitely stop and take your time and see what all you find. Um, so then you, you climb up some rocks and you keep going. And then eventually you just get to where the cliff drops off. But you can look across this little cove and you see this man-made cement bridge that goes from the beach to this man-made cement tide pool. And that's what we wanted to get to. And we saw people over there, but we couldn't figure out like, okay, maybe they came from the other side. So I just like yelled down the cliff and said, hey, how did you guys get down there? And they were like, well, you have to climb down this cliff. <laughs> So I'm looking over this edge. It's probably a good 15 feet high and it's just this cliff and like the waves were like crashing into the, the cliff. So I'm like, oh, absolutely not. There's no way I'm doing this. Well, all the people start to come back and they were like, yeah, the lifeguard just told us that the tides are about to pick up and we only have like 30 minutes left. So I'm watching them climb up this cliff that we're standing up on and they're having to time between the waves coming and crashing through the rocks and you know I'm watching them and probably like a good eight to ten people safely get up the cliff with no issues so I'm like okay Jen I know it's possible you just saw a whole group of people safely do this and no big deal you can do this so we knew there was a risk of after going down the cliff walking across the beach and getting to the tide pool area that the tide could pick up and then we could essentially be stuck. And that was a legit fear of mine. But we were like, you know what? We've made it this far. It's literally right there. We can be quick, let's be safe, but let's do it. Let's just do it. Just do it. So we did it. So we climbed down the cliff and, um, you know, timed between the waves, got to the beach, went over the bridge and we did a cold plunge that was our goal so yeah we jumped in the tide pool absolutely freezing little narrow and crooked but we're fine it's fine everything's good i'm taking pictures of you too Place right there. Yeah. 
It was just such a cool experience to have like the waves crashing up behind us against this tide pool and just the sound of waves crashing and just the power of the ocean absolutely amazes me. But we, we jumped in, did our thing, and then it came time to climb back up the cliff. Now, I probably was being a little dramatic and I don't have any of this on camera, but in my opinion, it felt like that short time that we went over there and were exploring and jumped in, it felt like the tide was already rising, probably in my head because I knew it was going to happen very soon. But the water just felt and looked deeper to get back over to the cliff where we climbed up than when we came down. So I was just really nervous, really scared. I'm not used to the ocean yet, though I'm working on that. But my friend Melissa, she went first, you know, really no issues. And then I, I timed like I, the wave came and crashed and I could see the next big wave forming. And I was like, all right, this is my chance. So I just went all for nothing. And y'all, that was like the fastest I have ever scaled a rock cliff in my life. That's actually where the bruise and scrape come from like my right thigh is all scraped up so it's definitely if the ocean and climbing and like slippery surfaces makes you super nervous this might not be the adventure for you all that to say all three of us had no issues we were totally safe no one got injured but I could see the potential of this being a dangerous adventure so that is why I want to share this information with you so that you guys can experience what we experienced, but also being safe. We hiked all the way back up the thousand steps and I feel like we earned a treat. So we ended the day at my favorite Ruby's Diner and all had dinner and amazing, delicious milkshakes. It was just the perfect way to end a magical day. Hope you enjoy, make sure to subscribe and like this video and I'll see you later. Bye my little locals.